Okay, well, I have no idea what we're going to talk about today, uh, but I'm here. Uh, uh, I just will just kind of reiterate what I said yesterday. Uh, you know, we've had a really good week, a great experience here in New Orleans. Um, I was just telling, saying a second ago, man, these guys are on point around here. Uh, very appreciative of all the people who uh, just make it such a smooth operation around here. I mean, a lot of folks that you, you don't really ever see, uh, but uh, man, and pulling up and people pulling cones out of the road. I mean, just there's a lot going on, and uh, you know this this bowl here. They they do a phenomenal job. I've never been to the Sugar Bowl as a coach, so it's a new experience for me uh, with the Sugar Bowl people. And uh, man, it's a it's an operation. Uh, they they are on point in every regard. So we've had a great experience. It's been a fast week. Uh, I mean, it's today's today is Friday for us. Uh, so. That's where we are from a mindset standpoint, kind of gearing ourselves for a, for a great day tomorrow. Uh, really excited about game day, getting here. I know Alabama is as well. It's a long time to prepare for a game. And, you know, I'm sure both teams are at this point just, just ready to go play. And, uh, you know, let's, let's see what's going to happen. OK, at this time, we'll open the floor for questions. In the back, over on the, in the center. David Hobo Tiger Net. Coach, I was wondering what went into your decision to practice over at uh, Tulane instead of choosing the um, Superdome, seeing as how you, you had the, the choice? Uh, well, um, when Mike Dooley told me what my options were, I, I said, well, let's go to Tulane. Uh, you know, just the dome is huge, first of all. And, you know, you, it's just like yesterday, you go down there and you, you, know, you spend all your time kind of looking around. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I just, I just wanted a little smaller environment. Uh, and, that, and to be honest with you, that's where we practiced in 92 as well. We practiced at Tulane. And uh, that was what I had in my mind. And uh, so it was great. It was a, it was a very good uh, practice setup for us. Um, yeah, first day was, was a little cold, but man, it might be the best practice we've had all year. <laughs> Our guys just loved it and embraced it. Uh, and then it was beautiful the rest of the time. But just a smaller setting. I just felt like maybe it would help us have a little more focus. We sent our kickers and punters and punt returners over there uh, on, our, um, on our Tuesday practice, you know, whatever day that was on the calendar here. But uh, yeah, so we've done that. And then we'll go over there and work out today as well. Uh, so we, we, and then we did media day over there. So they, they've had some experience in there. But I just, from a practice standpoint, I, I wanted to uh, – kind of keep it as much like home as I could um, and have a really good focus setting. We'll go over on the left-hand side now. Dabo, what have your encounters with the fans been like this week, and what does it mean that they've followed you all across the country the last couple of years on, on this adventure? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, yeah, I walked down Bourbon Street uh, the other night, I guess the first night we got here, uh, and that was uh, – that was quite an experience, uh, but a lot of fun. I got to see fans from both sides, and, and um, it was great. You know, people come from all over um, to see us play. And I just think that, uh, I mean, we're very fortunate, obviously, to be at Clemson and Alabama to, to have fan bases that, uh, that are going to show up. Uh, this will be, be an awesome environment, and people pay a lot of money to, to, to get tickets and, and to, to – you know they're just passionate about it, and uh, when you when you have a job that other people are passionate about, it really, I mean that's just it's a blessing. It's awesome to be a part of that. Go over on this side. Andrea Adelson, ESPN.com. Dabo, Jeff, and Tony already had a great relationship before you promoted them. How have you seen it grow as they've gotten more in sync coordinating the offense? Oh, they're great. I mean, they're they're easy. Easy, easy to work with, and and easy. To, they work together easily. Uh, it's just everybody's in sync. You know, we're all on the same page. Um, you know, everybody does it together. Uh, the game plans. You know, Danny and, and Robbie uh, are, are as much a part of it as anybody uh, in putting the plan together and, and uh, supporting Tony and Jeff and, and Streeter as well. Streeter just. I mean, he's. He's been a coordinator. He's right in the middle of it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm involved. We're all a part of it. 
but, uh, you know, Tony and Jeff just do a phenomenal job of kind of blending it all together and then on game day, you know, executing the plan uh, and bounce, you know, bouncing things off of each other and, uh, you know, just really proud of those two guys. But very seamless uh, working relationship, easy. Back over on the left-hand side. Dabo, based on what you've seen out of uh, Spence this week, your confidence level slash concern level, throwing him out there in a high-pressure situation tomorrow night? Oh, shoot. He's been under the gun. Uh, I was a kid another day. We, I don't know who I was talking to, uh, but we've, we've had a, you know, our season is kind of broken down into two segments, pre-Costa and post-Costa, uh, you know, before Costa and after Costa. So, uh, He's been great since Costa joined the team for whatever reason. And uh, he's made big kicks. Uh, you know, he's in, in made a kick, I think, down there in South Carolina, made a 46-yarder against Miami. He's hit six out of his last seven. Uh, so, you know, I mean, he's practiced really well. Uh, he's been about 88%, 87% uh, since he um, – you know, post Costa, <laughs> so he's been very consistent in practice, and that's it's not as much this week. He's been fine this week too, but really, the whole the whole back end of the season, he's kind of hit his stride. So he's prepared and ready to go do the job. Next question, right here towards the front. Reminder: Please identify yourself by name and media outlet. Ivan Mazel, ESPN.com. Dabo, talking about seeing both sets of fans on Bourbon Street and them coming up to you, there seems to be a healthy amount of respect between these two fan bases where it doesn't degenerate into the, the hate and vitriol that you get with South Carolina, Alabama gets with Auburn. How much of that is the success? How much of that is that you got it, you know, a foundation in Alabama? What, and what's your sense of that? healthy respect oh it's it, there's no question uh, certainly obviously my background in Alabama I, I definitely think plays a part because you know a lot of people I think want to pull for Clemson you know and this is an uncomfortable situation uh, they're a little conflicted uh, this is a unique rivalry from that standpoint um, but uh, I mean you know I, I go home for Christmas every year and Christmas Eve I always go shopping at the summit that's just what I do it's my shopping day and, uh, you know, ate lunch at Taco Mama there at the summit. And, you know, and I got all kind of people looking at me. And it's, to, to your point, I mean, I'm in Birmingham. And I had a lot of Alabama people come up to me and uh, with great respect, you know. I mean, they want to win the game. Uh, but, you know, they, they had very nice things to say. You know, like, hey, you guys got a great team and, you know, uh, such and such. I think so there's a lot of respect. But I think at the end of the day, Alabama people uh, respect good football. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, they know that we got a good football team and, and we, we're going to compete, uh, you know, even when we lost a couple years ago and we're going to lay it on the line. And, uh, and, and we know they're going to do the same thing. And so I think at the end of the day, uh, there is a healthy respect on both sides. And for Clemson people, uh, you know, I mean, they know I'm – two-time graduate of Alabama uh, and my wife is a graduate and obviously played there. Danny Ford's from Alabama, Charlie Pell's from Alabama, Hootie Ingram's from Alabama, Frank Howard's from Alabama. Uh, you know, there's been a ton of coaches that have coached at both schools. So there's just these unique uh, ties, relationships that cross over and, um, you know, and we haven't competed against each other a lot. Uh, but then all of a sudden you've got this this three-game series that has just happened at the highest level. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a, a rubber match. But, you know, to be honest with you, this probably ain't going to be the last one. Uh, there there will probably be more of these down the road. And I think that's great. I think it's a, a, a fun game. Uh, again, you got a lot of – I mean, this is big boy football. you got a lot of incredibly talented uh, football players that are going to be on the field, and they all want the same thing. And, uh, you know – I don't have any doubt it'll be a great game, but from a fan standpoint, I think it's a very healthy respect on both sides. I know if I, there's some places that if I went shopping, uh, I, I probably wouldn't get 
I probably, a lot of people probably wouldn't be so nice. <laughs> we have time for one final question, <clears throat> middle of the room. Hey, Dabo, Jeff Spiegel, WBMA, Birmingham. Uh, you lost a lot of guys off last year's team. <clears throat> Yeah, you're back in the playoff, and you're the number one seed. How proud are you of the fact that you have not only had success at Clemson, but you've been able to sustain it? Well, I think uh, that's probably the, the thing I'm most proud of. Of everything that we've done uh, is our consistency. You know, that, that's to me. I think to be great at anything, you've got to you got to be very consistent for a long period of time. Uh, and so that, that's been one of our number one goals since, since I got the job was to build a consistent program and that, you know what, we're not going to win it every year, but we want to compete for our conference and we want to be one of those teams that has a chance, you know, that's in the conversation year in and year out because I just, if you can kind of live there, then, uh, you know, you've got an opportunity uh, on certain years to, to get it done, you know, things go your way, you stay healthy, whatever it may be. Uh, but this year's been very gratifying because uh, obviously there was a lot written all year, all spring, all summer about who wasn't here anymore, and very little written about who was here. And I love the mindset of our team. You know that that we have a, a program and a team where you know guys have learned how to think the right way. They don't really get caught up in uh, you know, the things that, that that people will write about. You know will. There's no way they can have a good year this year because this guy's gone, this guy's gone, this guy's gone. It's just, just no way. Uh, and then vice versa. Man, they're, they're so great. They got this and that. You know, our guys know that at the end of the day, it comes down to performance. It's not about what people write or say or what about potential or what you did last year or what you didn't do last year. It's just really about a daily commitment and, 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 it's, and it comes down to performance. you got to play the games. And, uh, you know, just we've recruited guys. Uh, sometimes guys have an opportunity early. Sometimes guys have to be patient like a Kelly Bryant. Uh, sometimes guys walk on like a Hunter Renfro. Uh, you know, it, but at the end of the day, uh, man, you, you just got to believe in yourself and what you're doing. And that, so this team's been really special because, again, this is a so-called rebuilding year for us. Uh, we weren't supposed to be any good this year. And, and these, these old boys didn't get the memo. Uh, they just kind of went to work. And, you know, we've we found ways to win games. So it's been great. Uh, really proud of them. And uh, we've only got six seniors. I mean, we're one of the youngest teams in college football. We have six scholarship seniors uh, that came to Clemson. So uh, we got, I think we're going to have a chance to be pretty good next year uh, if, if we don't screw them up.